Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Chad Jones. I'm Vice President of Strategy and Product Management here at Dynamic Ops. You know, private cloud computing as an initiative has exploded across the enterprise scene. Most, if not all, enterprise customers actually have a private cloud initiative of some kind. Now, up until this point, the companies that have been servicing the private cloud are really been VMware, BMC, and some other companies in that area. Strangely missing from that list is Microsoft. Well, that's about to change. Microsoft is announcing the System Center 2012 set of products that will actually address private cloud for the enterprise. This is a huge investment for Microsoft, representing hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's very exciting for the enterprise community. However, just like every other technology in the private cloud space, in order to scale the phenomenal fabric management capabilities, you really need the user-centric computing capability and business awareness that drives unique parameters to scale. And that's what Dynamic Ops provides. So we view that the combination of Dynamic Ops with the Microsoft System Center 2012 product line really produces an incredible possibility for the enterprise computing set. So we're going to demonstrate that capability for you today and that integration. So we have a lot to see. Let's get to it. So now we're looking at the Dynamic Ops Enterprise Administrator dashboard here. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is we're going to go into our DCAC Administrator. And I'm going to go into our endpoint. Now, this is where we configure how we connect into SCVMM. So first thing I'll do is go into the endpoints. Here we go. And you'll notice that actually I have two types of endpoints here. I have System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2012, and I also have VMware vSphere. Now, we're able to take two types of fabric management systems and unify them underneath the same cloud fabric. So now what we have, again, vSphere and the Microsoft product line that we both can address. But again, we're doing this as an abstraction layer, so the service doesn't know that what's being used underneath it. The user has no idea. But the administrator can easily configure where these resources are placed. So I'll go into the SC VMM endpoint. And you can see here that we've put in the SC VMM server. And we've put in our credentials as well so that we can connect to that system. Next, we actually look at how we're going to use this system. So if I go into Enterprise Administrator and go to Reservations, this is how we actually designate what's going to be placed onto that system and what the quotas are, what the limitations are for that system. So if I go down to my Hyper-V cluster here, and I'll edit the reservation, what you'll see is that I'm assigning a type of provisioning here which is the SCVMM provisioning, and then the resources that are associated with this type of reservation. So out of this cluster storage management, I can assign a cost. I can show how much disk space I have. I can reserve a certain amount of that disk space, which I have here. I can also select which network I can be a part of and how much RAM I have as well. And then I go into my provisioning groups and define the groups of users or business units that are associated with both the reservations and, we'll show you in a moment, the blueprints, which are the definition of the service. So if I go into my provisioning groups, you'll notice that I have a few sitting here. I have my consulting services, development, finance, product management. If we go ahead and go into the development resources, You'll see that I can define, based on Active Directory groups and some owners, uh, who exactly is the group manager, who are the support roles, and who are the users. And you can see these are individual users. However, they can be groups, uh, multiple groups as well. Now, something that's very interesting for us is that below here, we have custom properties. Now, custom properties allow us to actually define something that is unique all the way to a granular level, like the provisioning group. We have three types of custom properties. So the first is a static property. If I enter this value inside of a static property, every provisioning action will get that value. There's also a user prompted value as well, so that it can ask a question to fill in that custom property. What location would you like? Uh, what's the prefix name? It can be literally anything. 
but most importantly, we offer a dynamic custom property so that we can associate a workflow with a property so that when I run this blueprint through this provisioning group, it will actually go out and calculate maybe a location or a prefix name and automatically enter that in. And it can do it from multiple data sources. And it's very easily customizable through our design center. So now once we've defined the actual provisioning groups, it's now time to tie those together into a meaningful service. So what we do then is go into our blueprints. And the blueprints are really what defines the cloud service, unifying the reservation and the provisioning groups. So now, if I go in, you can see I have this Windows 2008 R2, for example, and I'll go ahead and say, Edit. Now, if we look inside of the blueprint, you'll see, first of all, we have our name of the Windows 2008 R2. Uh, and again, that name can be anything. What groups are able to use this blueprint? It doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, what's the reservation policy and machine prefixes? There's also the approval policies. So I could set uh, the ability to have no approval, or if it ends up being over a certain threshold for RAM or cores or disk space, go ahead and follow a special approval process, and that includes a hierarchical approval process as well. How long to archive, what's the additional cost uh, is well above and beyond what the baseline costs are, so we have a very granular costing throughout the system. And then if we go into build information, we can see that it's a Hyper-V platform type, now, yes, it does say VMware Clone Workflow here. That's just a, a name for cloning. Actually, we're uh, changing that name as well. And then where you actually clone it from for your master images. Now, this is where we start to get into where those master images are. And they can be anywhere. They don't have to necessarily be in the SCVMM library. For us, we can pull those from anywhere on the network. We now can put in what's the minimum uh, CPU, memory, storage, how many leases you have. You can say minimum and maximum and approval thresholds you know, set here as well. So if it goes over a certain uh, point, it will ask for the approval process. Um, and then we go into properties. Now in properties, I could add additional information like in using Microsoft SCCM, System Center Configuration Manager, to actually provision the operating system and the applications uh, through a custom task sequence. Uh, we could tie that inside of here. Again, we have more custom properties in the blueprint as well. So that if we want to calculate a property at the blueprint level instead of the provisioning level, we actually can do that as well. Again, we're about bringing a user-centric, business-aware context to any lifecycle action inside of provisioning this machine. These custom properties allow us to do that. We then go over and have everything configured to actually run the service. So let's see what this means. So now we go into the user portal. And you'll notice that on the left-hand side, the navigation pane has been cut down from the enterprise view. So it's just what's relevant to that user. Now, I have two instances of this, one for Chad, for me, and then another one for a user named Dan. Now, what you'll notice is that I have systems that are inside uh, of the My Machines page that are already existing. And then I can go in and actually request a machine when I request a machine, if I go back into development and I go to that R2 server, you see that it's available. And then I can simply add in how many machines I need, what's the description and the reason for my request, and say OK. So now this will go off and actually provision those machines using all of the custom properties, the user-centric values, the dynamically calculated properties, any custom workflows we have, uh, the approval processes. Bring that together and then hand that off to System Center Virtual Machine Manager for creation. And then when Virtual Machine Manager is complete with its action, it will hand that back to the Dynamic Ops Cloud Automation Center and present that inside of the My Machines uh, environment. So if we go back to My Machines, what you'll see here is we have another uh, machine on Virtual Machine Manager being spun up right now. Now we have two additional machines that are already here. Uh, the PRD VM007 and D Dev VM007 as well. Now, if I'm going to go ahead and slip out of here and go over to my SCVMM server. So if we look inside of System Center Virtual Machine Manager's console, you'll see two of the actual machines, and the third machine will pop up here in a moment. Now, inside of here, you'll notice that under Cloud, there is a properties called DevCloud. 
Now, those properties were actually defined as custom properties inside of the Dynamic Ops Cloud Automation Center blueprints. So as those provisioning groups came through, this is what we actually entered in. So we have a very symbiotic relationship with System Center Virtual Machine Manager where we're putting in all of the information it needs inside of its metadata and then making sure that we're tied in together with that so it's meaningful with our own Cloud Automation Center console. So now, anything that's actually performed inside of the Cloud Automation Center will be reflected inside of this particular console. So now that we've set up the blueprint, the provisioning groups, and the reservations and tied them all together, let's go ahead and look at our user interface. So if I move over to my user interface, you'll notice that I have a different view here. On the left-hand side, I don't have all of the options that the enterprise administrator has. I have a view that's focused on my user. So now you'll notice I have two machines inside of here. Here's this dev VM007. Now you can see I have full control, destroy, expire the lease, power cycle, reboot. I can actually reprovision the whole machine. I can shut it down, suspend it, all of these things. But the beautiful part is it actually connects and syncs with the proper System Center Virtual Machine Manager host. So they are in sync with each other and Dynamic Ops Cloud Automation Center through its policies allows a secure control of that virtual machine. So if we go ahead and switch over to the System Center Virtual Machine Manager console, here we are. You notice here's our DevVM007. So it is actually in this console. Any machine that we configure through the Cloud Automation Center will be available inside of the System Center Virtual Machine Manager console. So now we actually have under cloud, we have a description that's called DevCloud. That description was actually created inside of a custom property in our provisioning group for the development platform. So we're actually passing those static, user-enabled, user-configured, or dynamically calculated custom properties from the Cloud Automation Center to System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Some pretty powerful ramifications there. So now, instead of having to create service catalog items with subtle nuances in properties, uh, maybe I have two SharePoint stacks and I have a very subtle difference in one property. Maybe it's location or even background color. Instead of having to create redundant service catalog items, I simply add in a dynamic, dynamically calculated property that says, what Active Directory group are you a member of? Therefore, make the background blue or make the background red. And I have one service catalog item, one blueprint to enable that in. That actually allows you to have a level of personalization that is unheard of, but apply it to tremendous fabric management skills that Microsoft provides. That is the key to cloud scale. So now that we have all of this system configured with our proper settings, if we go back to the Cloud Automation Center, again, I have a high level of control being able to control these systems, but I also have a path, a single console that I can go in and connect to that remote system. Simply by saying, you know, connect to a system using RDP will actually open up a window and allow me to connect to that console and be able to do some sort of configuration as well. So we can manage this through one console, one system, one view. I can even go in and connect using RDP to the console. So once the entire machine's configured, I have a path to go in and get to that console and complete the configuration as well. So together, you have a very powerful set of tools to really scale the cloud and make it relevant for your environments and its business context. So what we've shown you today through the demonstration is the power of dynamic ops, user-centric business awareness combined with the rich fabric management capabilities of the Microsoft System Center 2012 line. Together, these solutions provide a robust path to private cloud. It also provides the fastest path to cloud value in the industry. My name is Chad Jones. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.